recording this, so don't say anything you know that you'll regret later on. Um, but we're going to be recording this and have it available. Hopefully, if all the technology works, we'll have this available on YouTube in a couple of days, so you can watch it again and again because it's going to be riveting and exciting. So. Um, some of you had a chance to sort of read this quote probably while you're waiting. For those of you who are you know, not seeing video right now, I, I just want to tell you one of our campers said last year, and I think it sort of encapsulates everything we're about. Tell you Huda is by far the most amazing community I have ever been a part of. Whether it's your first time coming to camp, you've been to a junior camp before, or you've been to TY before, within the first day, it immediately begins to feel like a home away from home. And uh, I bolded the word community because what's so unique about Tell Yehuda um, is that it's specifically a community of teens. Most of you who are on this call, most of the kids certainly have been to camp before. You've been to a camp or you haven't been to a teenage camp before or a teen community. So welcome to Tell Yehuda. As I said, my name is David Weinstein. I'm the director of Camp Tell Yehuda. I was a camper at Tell Yehuda a long, long time ago a parent of two campers who went to Tell Yehuda, I met my wife at Tell Yehuda, um, and you know, I sort of live and breathe Tell Yehuda. And I want to introduce uh, my partner, Mac Lindner. Hi guys, uh, my name is Mac, I'm the assistant director for Tell Yehuda. Unfortunately, I don't have such a long list of TY memories yet as David, but I grew up in a youth movement very similar to Young Judea, and I've been working with Tell Yehuda. This is going to be my sixth summer now, and my fourth is the assistant director. And I'm also living and breathing Tell Yehuda at this point in my life. All right. So I um, I live in New Jersey. Mac lives in Brooklyn. Um, but we we both live in Barryville during the summer, where um, you know our job is to empower Jewish teens. That's what we're doing. For the kids on the the phone on the call here, um, we're all about giving you power in a world where um, I think teens need a whole lot of power and we need to hear more from teens. And for the parents, that's what we're doing. We're, we're, you know, we're about having a great fun time, but at the end of the day, we're also about um, empowering our teens. Tell Yehuda uh, is located in Barryville, New York, on the banks of the Delaware River. It sits really on the corner of where New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania meet. We're on 150 acres. Um, in just this sort of gorgeous valley between where the Poconos and the Catskills in New York State. And we've been located there since the mid-1950s. Tell you who to goes back uh, to 1948, shared its birthday with the State of Israel. And, you know, that's not a coincidence uh, because so much what we do has to do with Israel. And we, um, as I said, we're, we're a community. We're a community that's dedicated to fun. We're a community that's dedicated to building friendships. Most of my closest friends in the world are still the people I was at Tell Yehuda with back in the late 1970s and 1980s. And um, I'm sure there's some alumni on the phone here. There are probably still some of your friends. And I'm pretty sure that for the, for the kids who are coming to camp this summer, they're embarking on a set of uh, relationships that are going to last a lifetime in both the good times and the hard times later on. Fun, friendship, learning. And, um, and we have this sort of naive notion that we've had in Young Judea for um, over 100 years now that uh, young people can change the world. And we're still deeply committed to that idea. And we begin that process at Tell Yehuda. We, um, excuse me a second. Okay. Uh, not just any community, though, a community that uh, comes with a purpose. And as the National Leadership Camp of Young Judea, we, um, we have five pillars that really five foundations of everything we're trying to do in terms of the young people who we're empowering. One is to develop Jewish identity and Jewish identity that is deep and meaningful and that makes sense for teenagers, which is different than it meant in Hebrew school or in day school or bar and bat mitzvah. But what does it mean to live in a Jewish community? What does it mean to to sort of develop your own sense of Jewish identity. It's a pluralist environment. We're not Orthodox, conservative, reform, reconstructionist, secular, right-wing Zionist, left-wing Zionist, socialist, capital, or everything. Um, we are creating a community of Jewish people that come from all different backgrounds. And we believe, probably more than ever right now, 
that the ability of young people to live together with different ideas and different ways that they practice and different politics um, is critical for the Jewish people going forward. We're a Zionist summer camp. Uh, we're deeply, deeply committed to the state of Israel. We're deeply committed to building a lifelong, meaningful, engaging relationship with Israel. One that sees Israel as a real place um, and not just a storybook fantasy. It also means we're, you know, we talk about the challenges that Israel faces. As Zionists, we don't think the state of Israel is finished being built, but that we have a role in helping to build it and to turn it into, um, uh, you know, that Jewish homeland that we all aspire to. That feeds right into social action. We don't accept the world as it is. Um, we are constantly talking about changing that world. We're constantly talking about the need to take, as Jews, responsibility for our local community, for camp, for the communities we live in back home, for the country we live in, for Israel, and for the, for the big wide world. And so many of our alumni will talk about how it was a tell Yehuda that they began a lifelong commitment to social activism, a lifelong commitment to Israel, a lifelong commitment to, um, uh, to social justice. And finally, peer leadership. All of this is about building um, leadership for today and leadership for tomorrow. And campers have an opportunity throughout the summer to begin taking on more and more leadership in camp. So, as I said before, we're the National Teen Leadership Camp of Young Judea. Uh, I think most of the people on the call, you've gone, if you haven't been to TY yet, you've gone to one of our other camps. You went to Camp Young Judea in Texas. Big shout out to Camp Young Judea in Texas. We have Michael Esposito, the Assistant Director of Camp Young Judea in Texas, on the call with us today. Um, so maybe we'll give him a moment later to say hello from Texas. Camp Young Judea at Sprout Lake. I think there's a bunch of people here who went to Sprout Lake. Um, so I say personally, I went to Sprout Lake the year it opened in 1976, and I love that place. Um, Camp Judea in Hendersonville, North Carolina. Our friends from CJ who come up north to come to tell Yehuda. And finally, Camp Young Judea in the Midwest, in Wisconsin. So what's happening at Tel Yehuda is our campers are coming from all over the country. Um, and so, you know, if you've been to Sprout Lake, you've been to Texas or CJ or CYJ Midwest, you know, you've been in this one little Young Judea world, and you might have not known that in three other camps around the country, they're doing Young Judea stuff. And this is your opportunity to really get to meet them and to become part of a really national and increasingly international community of Tel Yehuda. So we've also developed uh, three partnerships and programs during our second session, which we'll talk about later, which is now really our global team community. We have a program uh, called Chavura, which is going to its 11th summer, which is a summer, which is a program for campers whose uh, parents have come from the former Soviet Union, um, who are uh, come from Russian speaking families who themselves are American kids and the opportunity there, they're part of camp, but they're also having an opportunity to, to, uh, to learn about their own Russian Jewish heritage. We have a partnership during second session with Camp Kimama, which is an American style summer camp in Israel, which is sending between 25 and 40 Israeli campers every summer, every summer to TY. And brand new, you're actually the first ones to hear this. We're just announcing now uh, a new partnership with uh, the Federation of Zionist Youth in England, and they are moving their summer camp to Tel Yehuda during our second session. And so we're expecting uh, 20 to 30 British campers as well. So first session, which is our four week session, we'll talk more about it later, is incredibly national. And we'll have some Israeli campers there as well. But uh, you know, if you want to sort of get an international flavor, second session, Tel Yehuda is really becoming the international summer camp for Jewish teens. So let's talk a little bit about um, the two sessions that we offer at Tel Yehuda. Uh, the first session we offer is June 26th through July 24th. It's actually starting about a week later this summer, and that's because of a lot of you New Yorkers on the phone who are on the video who have very much later regions next year than we've had before. So we're, we're pushing back. For those of you who might have siblings at Sprout Lake, we're starting the same day as Sprout Lake next year and we'll be running a bus between Sprout Lake and Tel Yehuda so that campers can be dropped off at one and you don't need to try to get to both. We'll talk more about transportation um, in a little while. So our first session, as you said, is four weeks. 
it is really our traditional leadership session. It's our, our traditional Young Judea leadership session. Uh, while the program's changed a lot in the last, uh, you know, 40 years since I was a camper, it hasn't really changed that much either. Um, it's still very much the bedrock of Young Judea, of the national youth movement. It is the feeder program from all of the regional camps. And it is divided into three different, we call shavot, which are age groups. The first is alumim. Alamim is our program for entering ninth graders. And I will say most of the campers in this program will be campers who have gone to Sprout Lake. Um, and the reason that is, is because of our four camps, Sprout Lake ends a year earlier than the other three camps, or the other three camps end a year later. Um, so about 75% of the campers will be campers who have gone to Sprout Lake. It'll be new campers as well. Um, but So Alamim is sort of like your introduction to tell you who that's your first time in a high school camp. For most of the campers there, they'll be starting high school, you know, in the fall of 2019. And here's an opportunity to sort of be in a, uh, in, in a more mature environment. Um, and by a more mature environment, we mean more responsibility, uh, being able to take campers more seriously intellectually, having more um, high school type activities. And, you know, obviously probably a few more shenanigans, too, that come along with, uh, with high school campers. Um, but, you know, you'll find that out on your own. Our entering ninth graders, the program, and Mac will talk in a few moments about the schedule for the day, but the, the program is very diverse. It includes all sorts of, you know, traditional camp activities, which Mac will talk about in a moment. Um, but it's also the introduction to leadership and beginning to look at what is our leadership identity partially by looking at uh, leaders throughout Jewish history, current Jewish leaders, and beginning to formulate for yourself what, it, what kind of leader you wanna be. Um, our Alamin program also has a four day trip to Niagara Falls. Uh, during that trip to Niagara Falls, you're gonna be doing some camping in some amazing um, uh, state parks in New York State, going to the Grand Canyon of the East, and finally heading to Buffalo, trying to find you some kosher buffalo wings and getting a chance to go on the made of the, the mist uh, trip on inside the, uh, inside the Niagara Falls. So it's really, uh, that's an amazing trip. Kids love that. We just started that last year for all our all Amim campers. And um, besides that, you'll also go rafting on the Delaware River because we're sitting right there. And you'll have an opportunity to uh, participate in a lot of all camp activities as well as activities just for Alamim. And we're really excited. Over 80% of the campers who went to Sprout Lake last year have already signed up for this coming summer. Um, and we're expecting generally we have 90 to 95% of campers from Sprout Lake will come to Tell Yehuda. So it'll be in some ways a reunion, but you'll also be the youngest campers once again if you've been from Sprout Lake. Um, but, and so that's sort of nice. You'll, they'll call you memers and um, they'll try not to pick on you too much for being the youngest campers in camp. Um, so that's our Alamim program. Our program for entering 10th graders is called Yachad. Yachad means together, and it's called Yachad because this is the summer where campers come from all four of our young Judea camps to Tel Yehuda. They're coming from Midwest, they're coming from Texas, they're coming from um, Camp Judea, North Carolina, and, and Sprout Lake campers are returning and welcoming them to, uh, to New York. And we usually have between 150 to 200 campers in Yachad coming from all over. And Yachad is the place where campers really, really start to delve into to really being a leader and having leadership skills. And we build those peer leadership skills in camp. You'll have all sorts of fun programs where you get to lead them and you learn how to lead them, designing games and teaching a song and teaching a dance, learning how to teach an activity, how to speak in front of your, your, your friends. And you'll also have a choice of five four day trips. We call this special interest week. And campers in Yachad have an opportunity to choose from uh, going kayaking for four days on the Delaware, not rafting, but in your own kayak, Four days of bicycling in upstate New York. We own mountain bikes. It's an amazing trip throughout Sullivan County. Four days of backpacking, but with everything on your back. Four days of, uh, and there's two four-day trips to New York City. One is a social action trip. We work very closely with the organization Repair the World in developing all sorts of interesting opportunities in New York City for volunteering. And a four-day photography expedition in New York City for those of you who might be interested in photography and seeing New York through through your lens. 
So that's a real highlight of the Yachad program. And then finally, for our entering 11th graders, um, sort of I think the highlight of all of our camping experiences is our, is our Hadracha Leadership and Activism Institute. This is a program um, which has launched the political careers of some of our alumni. Campers, you're gonna choose a, an issue that you think is really important, an issue it could be um, an issue like human trafficking or women's rights or racism or the environment. And on top of that issue, everybody's gonna be focusing on Israel as you prepare to go to Washington, D.C. Um, and prepare by learning about the issues, practicing what you're gonna to say to your senators and Congress people when you get to D.C. to talk about what the, the issues at hand are. And I want people to understand that, you know, we don't have a particular political agenda as Tel Yehuda. What we want you to do is to understand an issue from a variety of sides. That's what it means to be a pluralist and to go to Washington to learn even more about those different sides. So, you know, we have a gun safety group um, and we've had people in there who represent different viewpoints about, about gun rights slash gun safety. Um, and what we encourage all of our campers to do is to become critical thinkers about what the issues are, right? We live in a time where some people are questioning if, if we're thinking critically anymore and, and really examining different ideas and able to talk to each other those different ideas. And so we're doing that in Hadrachas. So you're going to go to Washington, D.C. You're going to spend four days there. You're going to have a, what we call Day on the Hill, where you're meeting with senators and Congress people and staff people. Um, we, you know, Mac, we should have put that great picture of them with the, um, the Florida congressman making a pyramid in front of the um, Capitol building. Um, you're going to you're gonna really meet with real people. You're also going to meet with nonprofit organizations, NGOs in Washington, D.C. that are working on different issues. You're also going to focus on Israel, and you're going to go to a few different organizations that are connected to Israel that have different um, viewpoints about Israel, um, all pro-Israel, but have different viewpoints about Israel. So it's a really fascinating trip. Uh, I think most of our campers would say this is really the highlight, um, certainly intellectually, of their experiences at Tel Yehuda. And then when you come back, you need to teach the rest of the kids in camp about what you've learned. So you're going to have some time, uh, you have a whole day where you're teaching all the rest of the campers about these issues. Um, that hopefully you've become passionate about in Hadracha. On top of that, Hadracha campers, they lead Maccabia, which is our color war, which for many of our campers, people would say is like, you know, the most fun day and a half in camp. Um, I know at the younger camps, you know, your staff, your counselors lead Maccabia, they're the captains. I tell you who the kids take on all responsibilities. In fact, most of our staff don't know what to do during Maccabia because our Hadrachah captains are so amazing. They really run the day. Um, and so they have an opportunity to do that. People start, um, you know, as young as Alameen, they're already thinking, will I ever be a captain of Maccabia? Um, it is a great honor to be a captain. It's also a great honor to just participate. So that's our, our Hadrachah program. And they also spend um, a day going rafting on the Delaware. So, Max will talk a little bit about sort of what does a normal day look like? And I, I, before, before he tells you that, there are 28 days. I think about 10 will be normal. But I um, <laughs> want to give you some basic idea of what a normal day at TY looks like. Yeah, I'm not even sure if we have 10 normal days, to be perfectly honest. So it really is a bit of a misnomer. Um, but uh, as David was saying, this is kind of the general flow of the day. And most days will kind of mimic a similar schedule, but things might shift in or out or, or something like that. But generally speaking, um, in the morning we wake up and we have some breakfast. We do just some uh, kind of getting ourselves ready for the day. And the way we do that is again, starting with breakfast. And we hey, do- I got a question for you. Yeah. Do they have to get up as early as they do at the younger camps? Uh, they do not. It's actually my understanding. Uh, so our, our tefillo is after breakfast. Uh, which might be some good news for some of you. I believe this year is the first year that all camps are going to be doing their tefillo after breakfast. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're moving there, but it's been, a, it's been a great move to start with breakfast and get ourselves nourished and ready for the day and then to move into our daily activities. Um, just a little bit about tefillo. Uh, we, we don't just do standard every morning the same set of prayers we have kind of alternating days. So we have kind of an A schedule and a B schedule for our tefillot specifically, where some days we'll have a more traditional egalitarian or young Judea style service, which might be something you'll be familiar with from your junior camp or going to a synagogue or anything like that. 
Uh, and then on other days, we have what we call alternative to philo. And these are days where we'll explore different prayers or different Jewish values or ideas through uh, tefillot or through activities like yoga or going on a hike or we had one a couple of years ago called shul in the pool where kids got to do some morning swimming but also learning about different tefillot and, and uh, specifically morning tefillot and awareness and things like that. Um, so it's, it's really cool. So uh, it's, a, it's just a different opportunity to explore Judaism and, and what it means to you and how you can interact with Judaism in our community. Um, so going past that, uh, we have four blocks in the day. We have two of them before lunch and two of them after lunch that are kind of our group activity blocks. And during this time, you can either be doing some sort of educational pula that will focus on, a pula is a program at camp if you're unfamiliar with the word. Um, and so it'll focus on those uh, bigger educational ideas that David was talking about a few minutes ago. So for Alumim, you'll be focusing kind of on leadership identity and what that means. For Hatoha, you're going to be focusing on your tikkun groups. Um, and that happens once or twice a day out of these four blocks. And then the other times you're going to specialty areas. And those are a little bit more what David was saying, those kind of traditional campy activities, ropes course and the pool and sports and omenu and... I'm trying to think if I can get them all. We have a garden, which is awesome. We have Rikud, which uh, as, you know, just like every other Young Today Camp Rikud is amazing and it's the best. And, you know, we do it at TY, just really big and really incredible. Uh, and maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about Shabbat. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's just a time to kind of learn in a different way, get some energy out, uh, be with your friends, have those really fun camp experiences. And then uh, we have an activity hour that is an elective hour. So we offer about 25 different electives in the summer, and you'll get to choose one or two of those to experience throughout the session, throughout the four weeks that you're there. And these can range from all kinds of different things, from you know standard basketball, running, soccer groups, to things like jewelry making, or we had one uh, a couple of years ago called a zine, which is a mini magazine that kids in camp produced and created content for, and we actually printed it and published it and handed it out to the camp on the last day. Uh, who, and ran, was, who ran that one? I believe it was your daughter, actually. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, um, but it's actually just really incredible to see our kids bring their own skills and passions and proclivities to camp and to actually be able to create something that the entire community can see and understand and learn from and enjoy. Uh, it's, it's, it's really cool. So like I was saying, we offer about 25 different opportunities for you to choose an elective and to do that for about an hour a day on each of the quote unquote normal days. Then we'll have uh, some dinner and after dinner, we go into our evening activities that are, you know, they're called Pula Erev and they're just big fun activities. They're, I, I can't even explain them without going through like multiple activities, but basically just think about something that's really fun, really active, really engaging. Um, you know, we had one a couple of years ago that was called Hunger Games that was kind of mimic after the movie Hunger Games, but not so similar um, and not so dark. It, we twisted it a little bit, but basically, you know, groups would break into teams and they had to kind of figure some stuff out and help each other and, and try and win. Um, and we had the cornucopia in the middle from the first movie and all of that stuff. But uh, and I guess one other example, we had human foosball for the last couple of summers where we would use harnesses and ropes and a soccer ball from sports and from the ropes course. And people would kind of tie in in a foosball fashion and then play a foosball game. Um, it, anyway, we try and be really creative and do these really big and fun and exciting uh, Pulo Erev because it's camp and that's what we like to do. And we like to have a lot of fun. Uh, and then after that, we'll go into the last activity block, which starts at 1030. And this is our pull out Lila Tope. And this is a time at night that is with your bunk. It's much lower energy. This is really a time to bond and create those relationships and those friendships that happen at camp. And if you're an alumni of any camp, you know exactly the type of relationship I'm talking about. And if you've never experienced this before, it's something that's truly magical and truly only happens at camp at Tel Yehuda, at a setting like this. And then after that, uh, at 11.15, our schedule ends, and it is Lila Tov, lights out, uh, and we wake up the next day and do it all again.
Thank you, Mac. Um, we do wake up, I think, about at least a half an hour, if not 45 minutes later than in most of the regional camps. We understand teenagers need to sleep a little bit more. And I, I would say, you know, as much as we would, we wish everybody went to sleep the moment we turn the lights out, um, sometimes that doesn't happen. So um, we're an all-teenage camp, as I said all the good things and all the shenanigans that come along with that. So that's our first session. Our first session, um, you know, I think people on this, um, most people who are on this um, call right now who have registered, registered for our first session. But I am so excited to talk about our second session for a few moments, which was brand new last summer. We used to have a second session that was basically the same as our first session. And we found it getting smaller and smaller, smaller, and that was fine. And now we've got this amazingly big, robust first session. And we decided to try to do something very different last year. And um, for me, as someone who's you know done 22 sessions as the director and another 20 some odd sessions as a camper and a staff member, it was really my favorite session I've ever had at camp. Um, our new second session, which we call our TY Intensives, is a two week program. It is uh, running July 29th through August 13th. And it has pretty much all the things Mac just described as part of the daily schedule, except it's anchored by, um, by the fact that every camper is also participating in a three and a half to four hour intensive every day of something that they really want to learn and experience in a deep and meaningful way. You know, first session, we do so many activities and they're all like an hour long. And second session, we get to go really, really deep. Um, so we tried it out last year um, and we, we just sort of fell in love with this new model. And for those of you who've already decided on a first session, I want you just to think a little bit about what it could be to stick around for two more weeks and do something very different. We found that people didn't want to stay for two sessions to do the exact same thing. Um, so let's talk about our intensives. So like I said, most of the day, a uh, chunk of the day, most of the morning, you're spending in your intensive, which will be a small group, 10 to 20 people who are doing it together, who are really passionate across age levels. Um, and this year we're adding two more. So I'm gonna say a few words about each of our intensives and then Mac will talk a little bit what the day actually looks like during our TY intensives program. And then we'll talk about a special we're offering if you sign up for both. Um, we have an art program. We're very excited. Last summer, we opened up five brand new art studios that we had just built. We don't have a great picture of them, which we're sorry about, but we're going to find one. Um, but it's an opportunity to work with, um, with Israeli artists together to really think um, about how to express oneself, not just Jewishly, but, but in a broader artistic sense. Um, and the opportunity to not just sort of, you know, if you went to a junior camp, one of our young J camps, you would go to Omanut, you'd go to arts for like an hour, you'd make something and then you'd leave. But the idea to really delve into your own art um, and to use a wide variety of mediums to do that. Our second program is our photography program um, called Campsite. This was uh, an unbelievable program. We're working with a world renowned artist. His name is Zion Ozeri, he's Israeli, he lives here now. He is photograph Jewish communities all over the world. And it's not just how do I use a camera. And I don't, by the, a camera, I don't know if some of the younger people know what a camera is, but I don't mean your phone, a camera, um, and not just to post on Instagram, but also Instagram. Um, but to not only learn the, the, the mechanics of how to use a camera, but also to think about what is the subject? How do you tell a story through your camera, through your lens, through a Jewish lens? Um, and last summer also we had sort of an amazing Israeli photographer who came in and worked with our campers. Um, if anybody's interested, I'm happy to share with you the portfolio of what our campers created last year. Really um, amazing photographs. Our third program is our Extreme Outdoors program. This is for those of you who might really want to get out of camp. You've en you enjoy those trips and now you really want to enjoy those trips. So the centerpiece of this is a six day extreme outdoor trip that includes um, kayaking, biking, hiking, and climbing. Um, you're out of camp with everything with you for those six days. Uh, last year, what was amazing about the part of 25 people who did it, most of them were Israelis. Um, 
In fact, most of our Israelis did the program, and most of the program was Israelis. And the Americans who were on the program, which I think about six or seven, they had such an incredible time. You know, they were here in New York State, but they're surrounded by Israelis who, by the way, want to speak English. So don't worry about that if your Hebrew is not so great. But just a very different flavor to sort of spend time. And they, they just bonded in such an incredible way. When they're not out of camp, they're doing other extreme things, like extremely making noise, um, extremely bringing ruach to camp, um, extremely doing the ropes course and other outdoor challenging activities. Um, we're expecting this program to be even bigger this summer. We're going to have to cap it because it was so popular last year. Um, our Hamama program. Uh, is a program for entering 11th and 12th graders. This is our Advanced Leadership Institute. This is for those uh, campers who really want to go back and become majachim in their camps, want to become uh, uh, leaders in their local youth groups, etc. In fact, if you participate in this Hama program and then you go back and work in a Young Judea camp, we give you a $250 bonus when you go back and work there because we're really preparing you to become the next generation of great counselors. Krav Maga. Um, Krav Maga is an Israeli martial art um, that was started in uh, the ghettos during the Holocaust and then brought to Israel. And uh, this was an incredible thing to see 20 of our campers really learning to defend themselves in a way that was real, um, in a way that most of our campers who left this program felt more confident in the world. Um, and I would say about 75% of our campers were females. Um, and as a father of two daughters, really great to see our girls learning to defend themselves. Um, boys too, as you can see. Um, and we worked last year with this amazing woman, 18-year-old uh, Yulia Sachkova, who is Israel's three-time international European kickboxing champion. Um, and she's, I can't see if she's in this picture, yeah. She's the one in the picture um, with boxing gloves on. She's right tiny, in the middle. Right in the middle. She's tiny. And uh, every one of us would be afraid of her. Um, but she's, um, besides being um, so incredibly skilled, also so incredibly able to teach. Um, what is the name of her program in Israel? What's it called? Um, Fight Like a Girl. Um, she's currently in the IDF. She's currently serving in the Israeli Armed Forces. Um, and we're hoping we'll be back with us this summer uh, to teach Krav Maga again. It really depends on if she wins the championship again in Croatia. So you guys should all be rooting for her. Um, but we're, we're really excited about being able to offer a program like Krav Maga on camp. We also offer a program called Rightopia, uh, more for the writers and the fighters. Um, we're working with a program in New York City, an organization called Rightopia, that's a creative writing program that's really based in all of our Jewish and Tel Yehuda values of peer leadership. In fact, the woman who started Rightopia in New York, totally by coincidence, went to Tel Yehuda and says that she learned everything from the peer leadership we do in TY. So how people learn to write creatively and be able to use um, each other um, uh, to improve their writing. writing. And that's what I'm cooking out of this. Um, we also have a program called Bamit Bach, which is our cooking program, uh, which we started last year. We started late, that's why it's not in this slideshow now, but we're gonna be offering again next year. We, uh, we trained some chefs last summer. And it wasn't just, hey, go cook what you want. It was like, how do you use your knife? How do you chop? How do you learn the very basics of cooking? But by the end, um, they were making the food for our final banquet, uh, the members of our Bamit Bach program working with an incredible chef and some other young staff members who were interested in cooking. And uh, in fact, one of the great moments in camp was the, the Bami Bach kids made a, this Italian lunch and they served it to the Rytopia kids. And the Rytopia kids, they then wrote reviews of the food, of the restaurant that they had created. So it was very real and the photography people came to pictures. So we're also all these programs are working together. And then this coming summer, we're offering two brand new programs. Um, one is tennis, working with Israeli tennis instructors uh, to improve your game. If, uh, if there's room, I'm going to sign up for that one. And finally, uh, filmmaking. And um, in fact, this is the one that is already most signed up for is our, is our new filmmaking program. And we are work. I can't promise that, but we, we expect that one of the people leading this program will be um, uh, one of the key people at Pixar. 
um, as well as some other uh, former J Young Judea filmmakers. So it would be an opportunity in those two weeks to create a uh, something of your own. In fact, all of these are about your own self-expression, about finding something you're passionate about, um, about finding something um, that you can take as a set of skills forward with you throughout high school, throughout the rest of your life. Those of you, as you get closer to college, this is the sort of intensive program that a lot of colleges would like to see that you've participated in. It's camp, but it's not camp. It's camp, but it's also campus. It's an opportunity to, to, to dig deeply. So um, what, what does a day look like for in these two intensive weeks, Mac? Uh, so as David was saying a few minutes ago, really the goal is to delve very deep and spend a lot more time on these specific subjects. So we shifted our schedule a bit to allow for that. Uh, what that kind of looks like now is we wake up at the same time, we have breakfast first still, and then in second session, we actually do something called Kava Note, which is a little bit more exploratory. And uh, the word Kava Note actually means intention. And it's to kind of start the day thinking about Judaism and sometimes that's through a, a prayer or two or sometimes that's through an experience. Um, the way it works is you get to kind of choose your track and each track kind of has a theme. So we had like an arts track last year where each day there was a different medium of art. Sometimes it was musical art. Sometimes it was physical art. Sometimes it was, you know, creating your own short skit or something like that. Um, sometimes it was listening to music and hearing what other people have said or spoken about Judaism or different uh, aspects of life. <clears throat> but the idea there is to really, again, just kind of, uh, learn and figure out what's going on and start the day thinking about this kind of stuff. Then we move into our big block of intensives. And this is a three hour block where you are in your program for this entire three hours. Now don't, you know, freak out too much because there are breaks and it is very fun. And, you know, a lot of times it's lighthearted. So it doesn't, you know, you're not sitting there like in a classroom for three hours. It's very different. You'll be walking around camp. You'll be doing different activities. So the three hours really flies by. It doesn't feel like three hours at all. Um, after that, we kind of move into a little more traditional of a camp schedule where we have lunch. We'll have a bit of free time. Um, something I actually didn't mention about our first session also is we have something called Kofesh at camp, which is time for the teams to kind of hang out and just be together and hang out around camp and get to know each other a little bit more. Uh, we do have activities going on that are supervised and ran by different staff in case someone wants to be doing something during this time. But we do find a lot of teens just enjoy hanging out in the sun or being under a tree or walking around camp and just getting to know each other on a, on a bit of a deeper and more personal level. After, that, after we have some of that free time, we'll have uh, a little bit of time to spend with people your own age where you'll go to different specialty areas and same specialty areas as they were that I was talking before, rope scores, art, pool, etc. And then after that, we'll have what, what we're calling minors, which is, again, a kind of a, an elective hour. <clears throat> excuse me, but a little bit longer. It's an hour and a half instead of just an hour. And this is something that you'll do every day. Some of our intensives also become minors, but not all of them. So for example, Bami Bach last year, the culinary arts program ran as an intensive and as a minor. So, so, so if you're interested in kind of two different things, you can kind of really delve deep into one and then really explore deeper, but not as deep as you would in your intensive. <clears throat> and these are also run by the same professionals that come and run the intensives. So you're still getting, getting good, high quality experience and programming. It, again, it's just not for as long or as deep as it would be if it was your intensive. And then after that, we have dinner and we go back right into uh, Pula Erev, just like in first session. And again, this is a time where we really try and just do it up big. We like to do some more all camp activities during second session because we are a little bit smaller. And so it's a little bit easier for us to bring everybody together and do one activity, which is really awesome and really fun to see the entire camp doing one thing together. It's kind of like Maccabi Ah, but in a, on a little bit of a smaller version. Um, and then you'll have your Pulot Lila Tove with your bunks. And then you go to bed around 11.15 and wake up and do the same thing again the next day. What's, what's um, you know, really, there's a lot of unique things about this program. One of the unique things, of course, is that you're doing this with Israelis, you're doing this with Brits, you're doing this with some other European campers. Like there's a, you know, you're, you're cooking, but you're not just cooking with the same kids that you may have been around all of your lives. 
So that's pretty exciting. Um, so those, that's a day in the life of the, the intensive programs. Like I said, we did this for the first time last year. We were, we were so excited about it. We're adjusting a few things this year to make it even better. Um, and we, you know, we look forward to considering if you aren't coming to second session, thinking about adding that and what that might look like to, um, to really delve into something particularly exciting. So, um, you know, we're sort of cognizant of the time. I want to talk about a few more things. Uh, one is very quickly about our Chabara program. I mentioned this before. This is our program for campers whose families come from the uh, Russian speaking Jewish community, which now is close to 20% of the American Jewish community. We made a commitment uh, 10 years ago to start a program to bring Jewish kids who, for the most part, don't have a whole lot of Jewish background um, from the Russian speaking community and to build a new cadre of Jewish leadership uh, from Russian speaking Jews. All of the staff in the program themselves are either Israeli or Americans, but came from the former Soviet Union. We even have some campers who come from Russia to be part of the program as well. And um, they'll be participating in the morning in the intensive program, but then have special programming that's specific to Chavarad, specific to Russian, Russian Jewish identity. Um, and, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's one other thing we do in camp that sort of makes camp a diverse Jewish community, right? You know, there are a lot of great Jewish summer camps out there, and most of those Jewish summer camps, you know, the kids come from very similar backgrounds, whether it's their reform or orthodox, conservative. Um, our camp, we just have, we just have everybody, um, and we're committed to trying to have everybody, whatever that means, and to learn to live together, because it's not something that we see in the Jewish world so much. The other piece for me personally is many of us who grew up in Young Judea in the 1960s and 70s and 80s uh, were, were deeply committed to helping free Soviet Jews. Um, and we rallied and we protested. I even went on a secret mission to the Soviet Union back in the 80s. And uh, to now to have the children of those people who refused leaving the Soviet Union those days to be part of our camp um, is real meaningful to us who, who made that a, a big part of our commitment. We've talked a lot about what, what campers do in camp. Um, we're gonna turn our attention a little bit to what make camp, what really makes camp work, and that is our staff. And what, what, what Mac over here spends most of his time doing during the year is finding the 140, 150 best staff people who are gonna come and work with your kids. Um, and when I say they work with your kids, it's not just that they're following them around and make sure they go to sleep at night. It is providing a type of mentorship that um, specifically teenagers need. Um, and if you want to read more about that, if you go on our website, we, we, we have a new book we published recently. Um, it's part of a series of books on raising Jewish teens. And we talk about um, in our book, the blogs that we've written, um, uh, about the need for teens today more than ever to have young adults who serve as role models in their lives. Parents, you're doing a great job. I don't question it. Um, we're doing a great job as parents, but they also need uh, young adults who've recently been through the challenges of adolescence and have come out the other side to be mentors to them. When we talk, so when we talk about staff, we're not just talking about like finding people to make sure your kids are safe. We'll talk about safety. It's the most important thing to us. However, we're really talking about bringing a set of values um, and a mentorship for your for your kids. And so many of our campers tell us how important their staff members were. So, Matt, you want to talk a little bit about our staff and who they are? And uh, yeah, sure. I'll talk. I'll try and keep things a little brief, though. Uh, so, as Dave was saying, we have a staff that that has about 145 people on it each summer, and it's quite an eclectic group of people. We have staff that come from Eastern Europe. We have staff that come from uh, all over the U.S staff that have worked at every junior camp, staff that have not gone to any junior camps. Um, we have staff to come off of your course, which is another Young Judea program if you're unfamiliar with it. Um, but really our staff comes from all over the place, which is perfect because that exactly mimics our campers. And having these different personalities uh, at camp really help our campers find those staff members or find those young adults that they can connect with and they can learn a little bit from or potentially see as a mentor one day in their life. Um, but a little bit more about the staff. So every one of our staff members goes through a training process, an interview process with me, and uh, this happens throughout the year. Uh, at the beginning of summer, they all come and we talk about, you know, what are we going to do? Who are our kids? We go through a few different, um, we go through a few different trainings that involve all of camp. Some of it is, you know, what does a cabin time look like? What are our different kids? have to do each day? How do we provide those activities? 
But then we also talk about what it is to be an adult for the teens, that it is your job to make sure these kids go back home the exact same way that they came to us. You know, I, I'm not a parent yet, but I totally understand that being, you know, as a parent, your most precious thing in the entire world and you want nothing to happen. And it's our job over the summer to ensure that nothing happens to your teens. And that's something we really impress upon our staff. So throughout our training, we talk about what, you know, making sure that all of your kids are where they're supposed to be all of the time, making sure that you always have an eye open for, even if it's not your kid, but you see someone walking around camp and they look a little lost or they're not exactly sure, you know, what's going on. Let's figure out what's going on there. Uh, but even on top of that, we also do trainings in things like youth mental health first aid, which uh, this last summer was the first summer we did that. We were lucky enough to be part of a pilot program for Jewish summer camps that about was about 30, so, 30 or so of our staff members were trained in how to understand the kind of youth psyche and what are some very simple steps to take with the teens before, before you know, everything kind of breaks down or before we get to the point where we need full intervention with older adults, whether it's our social worker at camp or our Roche Machene, who are usually educators or people who've worked at camp for years and very familiar with the teen life and working with teens. Um, but we also want to make sure that not just the heads of camp have that training and understanding, but that our staff have that training and understanding. We also talk a lot about cultural differences. So as I was saying before, we have staff that come from very different backgrounds, very different cultures, just like we have campers that come from very different backgrounds and different cultures. But we want to make sure that we're all on the same page about how we're teaching and how we're talking with our kids. As David said earlier, you know, we're not a political camp. We don't push a certain agenda. But we want to make sure that every person in our camp has a space to voice their opinion and to feel comfortable and to feel validated that their opinion is good and valid and has a place in our community and they should be respected for that. And so we spend a lot of time during our orientation talking about stuff like that as well to ensure that everybody in camp feels like they belong and that they have a space because that's truly who we are and what we believe. Um, I don't know, David, was there anything else about staff you wanted me to highlight? I, I just want to put a highlight around our Israeli staff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talk about connecting kids um, to Israel in meaningful and engaging ways. Uh, so much of that comes through the staff that comes from Israel. And we have generally between 35 and 40 staff members who are coming from Israel. Some of them are finishing uh, what's called their Shnat Sherut, their year before the army. That wasn't supposed to happen yet. Um, and, and some of them are coming right after the army. And they're bringing with them uh, Israel, an Israel that's real. Um, that's, again, not just a storybook Israel. Some of them um, are, are coming and they live in, in Jerusalem or they live in Tel Aviv, live in big cities or they live in rural areas. Um, we, the overwhelming majority of them are Jewish Israelis, but we've also recently have had a, a Druze Israeli member of our staff um, who's able to bring another perspective on what it means to be an Israeli. Uh, they have opinions about the good and the bad and the ugly and the wonderful about Israel, and we encourage them to share that so our kids really get a, a sense of what Israel is. But the most important thing, and this, this happened with me when I was 11 and continues to happen today, is that we're, we're expecting that most of our campers will go and spend some meaningful time in Israel after they've been through Young Judea camps. Um, and when they get to Israel, now they have people they know. Um, you know, you might have family there already, but they're calling up their, their madrachim, they're calling up their counselors from TY and going out for coffee with them in Tel Aviv. Um, they're making really a, a deep and meaningful lifelong connections with, with Israelis and seeing Israel through the lives of Israelis. And the Israelis are bringing their music with them and they're bringing posters and they're bringing, um, you know, pictures of their, of their family. Uh, we encourage them all to do that so that we are, you know, not, well, we're, well, we talk about some of the, 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 the political situation in Israel and the challenges and the conflict. We don't want our campers, our teens, to walk away with that as the only view, that the only view they have of Israel is what they see on the news. We want them to see uh, the vibrancy and diversity of the country um, that, that, that is our homeland. So, so many of our staff is there. And we also have increasing number of staff members from England. Um, who are coming from our sister youth movement, the Federation of Zionist Youth. And that's all, besides the fact their, their um, accents are awesome um, and they have funny sense of humors, um, it's also adds to the diversity of camp. So we'll, we'll start moving a little faster than we're getting towards nine o'clock. We wanna 
respectful of your time. Uh, say a few words about um, supervision. We, we have sets of standards that we use for all of our supervision. We meet, we're, we're seen every year by the New York State Health Department. They come and inspect our supervision, uh, the American Camp Association. We just finished a year of having our standards um, Max smile because he spent a lot of time on this. Um, we're, we're visited by outside uh, people from the American Camp Association. We're accredited by them every year. Um, we follow all of those. We train our staff in adolescent development. We train them with the mental health first aid. I just spent an entire day today with some other camp directors talking about mental health and teenagers and how we can best provide for the mental health needs of all of our teenagers. Um, Mac talked about free time before. There is free time at Tell Yehud. And I know sometimes campers come from our younger camps and they say, what's with all the free time? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's not free as in nothing is going on. It's free as in you have opportunities to choose different activities during that time or to take a little rest or to hang out and maybe play some guitar with a friend. Um, but always zone coverage provided during free time. So our staff is everywhere. Even if they don't see them, our staff is around. Um, Healthcare, um, we do run an infirmary, 24 seven nurses on duty, uh, as well as Mac mentioned before, we have a full-time mental health professional as well. Um, so they're at a parent liaison. So we call all of these our camper care staff um, responsible to taking care of our kids. We're also, we're 20 minutes from the local hospital and an emergency and an emergent med center. Um, we are providing medication to about 20% of our campers every day. There's a whole process for that. If your camper takes medication, um, you'll get more information from us about how to, to, um, to order that online so it's delivered to camp. We highly encourage families, um, if you're signing up for Tell Yehuda, to fill out our health history forms, all of our health forms as clearly as possible. So we want to be in a position where we can provide safety for your, for your camper health and safety. We also have 24 seven security at camp. So uh, when you arrive at camp, there is an armed security guard at the gate. Um, camp is a, a fenced in, the river's on one side, we can't fence that in, but there is 24 seven security. We work with the local, um, local off-duty police officers who also uh, patrol camp at night. Um, so campers, don't be surprised at one o'clock in the morning, there could be a patrol car going through camp. We really, you know, I know this is towards the end of the presentation, maybe it should be at the beginning of the presentation, but as, as Max said, you know, the, these, are, these are your cherished kids and um, we cherish them also. If anybody has further questions about specific medical needs, uh, please let us know. We are known as a camp that has good food. Um, we're real, real proud of our good food. Some of you will come from camps that didn't have good food. Um, we know that. Um, we know some of you came from camps with pretty good food. But um, here you can see a camp or with a Camp Judea t-shirt on. They have good food. Uh, and they're in our salad bar. Uh, we know that teens' palates have changed. Um, we can't just serve chicken nuggets and grilled cheese every day. We're providing uh, three nutritious meals a day. There are always alternatives. There's always a salad bar. There's a breakfast bar. Um, there's pr plenty of fresh produce. Um, there's always alternatives for people who have uh, who need to not have gluten or need to not have dairy. We have a large number of vegans and vegetarians who come to camp, um, and we are providing for everybody and whatever those dietary needs are. Our uh, our the head of our kitchen, who was one of my former campers, um, he has a passion, a passion for making sure that particular dietary needs are met by every one of our campers. And some of you know him, because his name is Stu Stein, and his daughter is coming to TY this coming summer as well from Sprout Lake. And somebody looks happy in the video there, I see that. Um, so that's health and nutrition. Um, just a few quick further things about camp. Uh, camp is divided into two campuses, our Olive Campus and our Bet Campus. This is our Olive Camp. During first session, this is where our two younger age groups live. Our Alamim and Yachat campers live here. As you can see nestled beautifully in the valley here. And our older campers live on the Bet side, which is uh, a bit newer, built in the 1970s. Um, and so people look forward to when they get older and they can finally live in Bet and own Bet. And during first session, second session, all of our programs take place on the Olive side. Uh, Campers playing basketball. A few years ago, we built an amazing new aquatic center. Um, so 
campers, you know, on Shabbat, you'll see it filled during Chofesh. Other, day, other days during Chofesh, during free time, the pool is filled. People going down the slides. Or right next to that, they're playing volleyball in the dirt, um, in the sand pits. Or, Mac, you could say a few words about this. Or they're climbing up this wall, which I have not climbed up. Mac, what's going on here? Uh, so we have a we have a huge ropes course, uh, from what I understand from other camps. Uh, we have a four sided climbing wall that's about thirty five feet in the air, uh, and I'm not sure about every junior camp, but I know it's bigger than at least one other junior camp. I think Sprout. I think our wall is significantly taller than. Uh, but we also have uh, what's called high elements, where we have a zip line that range. It's about three hundred and fifty to four hundred feet. We have uh, two things called the dangling uh, jungle gyms, which are, are made of like tires and poles and different uh, staples and things like that, that you get to kind of climb up and through and, and stuff. Uh, and then we also have our low ropes course that has a lot of kind of team building and team bonding initiative type activities. Uh, for example, we have a trust fall. We have something called a spider's web. Uh, if you see David is circling something here, um, this is called the pamper pole. So the pamper pole is a pole that is about, I think it's about 20 feet in the air or so. You climb all the way at the top at the very bottom, you see the little ladder, you climb all the way to the top to that disc. That disc actually spins, which makes it just a little bit more challenging. And then if you look, you can kind of see the outline of a trapeze that's maybe uh, just a little bit towards the top right. And the goal there is to actually jump out from the pole and kind of almost like a free jump, free fall, try and grab the trapeze and, and hold on to it. Obviously, you're connected to a rope and you have a team of at minimum six people holding the rope so that it does not, you know, fall in any way. Um, but it's a really fun activity. I've never grab the pole it's my dream to grab the pole one day uh, because if you grab the pole you get to sign your name on the bottom of that pole which is really cool and it's kind of becoming a hall of fame type thing at the ropes course so we're gonna um uh we're gonna move quickly uh, mac was also the former director of our ropes course program yes. um, and really understands the value of you know, it's not just about climbing, it's about challenging, it's about building self-confidence, resilience, etc. cetera. Um, so we're gonna finish up as quickly as possible. You see a little bit of our um, arts program here. We talked about that before. Um, we're, I've also been fortunate to do a lot of great construction over the past year or so. You're seeing a picture here of a, of a new um, uh, fire pit slash um, meeting area. On the left hand side of the picture you see our new a drawing of our new educational center which is just about finished uh, and should be finished next month. I'm going to see it on Friday um, which will be wonderful new resource for camp. And then on the right side you see um, two of our new five art studios that we just built. So some important information and I don't know why those the drawings are on those, these pages too, but um, communicating with us, you can find all of this on our website, but we're very active on Facebook, on Instagram. Definitely follow us on Instagram. Uh, Max working on that. We yeah, tweet, Instagram. We tweet some stuff once in a while. We'll be sending out a newsletter during the summer called the Machane. I think the best way to get a feel for camp, if you're still not sure you want to be there, or you just want to get a sense of what's going to happen this summer, is check out our YouTube page. Um, there's lots of great videos from every summer there. You can get a feel for what's going on at camp. Um, you're ready to go. What now? How do you get to tell you? So if you're from New York um, and from the metropolitan New York area, you have a choice. You can drop your campers off at camp in Barryville on opening day, or you also can drop them at Newark Airport where there'll be a bus coming to camp. And for the campers not from the metropolitan New York area, um, we over half our campers fly in. And we have a, a, a nice operation going on at Newark Airport every year. Um, there'll be information on our website about when to make plane reservations. If you live in a community with people, um, you know, in a large community where people are coming to tell Yehuda, we'll certainly help you uh, connect with each other to make flights that are similar or the same flights. Uh, we don't make flights for people, um, but we certainly try to connect people with each other so they can come together. Spread the word, um, because this year we're doing something very different. We are, um, we'd love to grow the number of Jewish campers who are getting the opportunity to come to Tel Yehuda. So we're offering $1,000 off tuition for every new friend who you bring to Tel Yehuda. The, by new friends, we mean people who have never been to a Young Judea camp before. So it can't be a friend from Sprout Lake from last summer. 
Um, but if there's a friend from home who you think would benefit from being in this type of community, um, as I said, there's $1,000 off of, of tuition. Um, and that is a good way to reduce the cost of camp because camp's not cheap and we know that. And so let's talk about the price and the dates and stuff of camp. And all of this information, by the way, of course is on our website. So you don't need to remember any of this. Um, the price tuition for our first session is $5,250, $5,250. We actually remain, I know it's a lot, we remain um, well below the average of most of the Northeast um, Jewish summer camps. Ramah camps are over $6,000 now. Um, but we know this still is, is, is a big, big price tag. Um, there, is a, there are some additional fees for some of those Yachad trips we talked about, and an additional $200 fee for our Hajjaha trip. Um, our two-week TY intensives, most of them are $26.50 for the two weeks. Um, a couple of them have some additional charges, like the TY Outward Bound program, has, um, TY Extreme program has some additional costs. Um, but a few good things. First of all, for if you sign up for both sessions, there's a $500 full summer discount. Um, if you have siblings coming, it's $200 off for the second sibling coming to tell you who We talked about the Refer Camper program. And then most importantly is, is we do spend an inordinate amount of time raising money for tuition assistance. We don't want anybody not be coming to camp because of the cost of tuition. So if you've gone to one of our original camps before, we use the same process as they do about there's an application to fill out online and then we review that application and we try to provide as much as we can in assistance um, so that everybody can come to TY. I don't think we lost a camper last year because they couldn't afford to be there. Um, so we will certainly work with your family. And if you're flying in, we also offer travel assistance. So um, if you are in, have financial need, um, we will reimburse you the cost of the flight uh, past the first hundred dollars. There are some caps per city, but uh, but basically most of those flights should fit into those caps. So again, we don't want people outside of New York to be having to spend more money than inside of New York if if it's if it's a challenge to do so. Um, and if you're, I don't think there's anybody in the call like this, but if you've never been to Jewish summer camp before, or you have a friend who's never been to Jewish sleepaway camp before, um, we have a program with a thousand dollars first year campers will receive off for first session and $700 for the second session. So here's a great idea. Find a friend who's never been to Jewish summer camp before. They'll get $1,000 off and you'll get $1,000 off. So it's a, certainly a nice way to sort of reduce the cost of camp. We just wanna make camp bigger and better for everybody. Um, so I wanna make sure is very quickly, there were a couple of questions that people wrote in that we didn't answer. Most of them we went through, but Mac, you have the list of questions. I think there's like two more questions we need to answer and then we're gonna say good night. And uh, yeah, go ahead, Mac. Oh, I was just gonna say, um, could you maybe just shed a little bit more light on the different uh, denominations of Judaism in camp? Kind of, you know, the direct question was, how does, if I'm an Orthodox camper, how do I fit into camp? Okay, so first of all, everybody should know, camp is a uh, kosher camp, it's under rabbinic supervision, we're visited by uh, Mashkiach regularly, our staff is trained in, uh, our kitchen staff obviously is trained in running a kosher kitchen. Camp is also Shomer Shabbat uh, in public spaces. So in the bunks, in the Chadarocho, in the dining hall, everywhere throughout camp is Shabbat, uh, it is a Shabbat observant camp. And I have to say, for those of you who are not Shabbat observant um, outside of camp, uh, the overwhelming majority of our campers, they, they, they say Shabbat next to their friends is their second favorite thing in camp because it really feels different. And part of what makes it feel different is that it's Shabbat observant. You don't hear the loudspeaker going off. You don't hear music blasting. There aren't cars running through camp, et cetera. Um, so that is just sort of a foundational thing. It allows campers of all different Jewish backgrounds to participate in our programs and feel comfortable and enjoy. Um, we do, as Max said, we have to fill out every day. On Shabbat morning, we do offer actually a, a, a selection of different minyanim, different types of Jewish prayer experiences, including an Orthodox prayer service with a machitza. Um, during the week, uh, as Max said, there are days where we're all together as a camp and we're, we have a traditional service. And there are other days where they're more alternative. But we have campers who in the morning would like to daven shacharit. Um, and some who are putting out the fill-in. 
And depending on the numbers, um, they might gather together to do that. And some campers will choose to um, daven shacharit on their own. But we'll be, we always work with campers to make sure there's space for them to, to daven shacharit. Um, and we have campers who choose, you know, who also daven mincha mariv. Um, we don't have a mincha mariv program. I know at CYJ Midwest they do. I don't think at the other three camps. Um, we will, like with all things, we want to work with families and with campers around um, their religious observance and making sure they feel comfortable with religious observance. We, every, we just got a results of our survey back about 15 to 20 percent of our campers identify as Orthodox. Um, so I hope that's a good answer. The person who asked that question, if you want to speak more about that, and in general, by the way, I should say this now. Uh, we're open to having a conversation with everybody on this phone, a uh, separate conversation about any questions you have when we're done here. That's what we do. We sit on the phone and we talk to people all day. So we're happy to follow up on any of these things. Mac, are there any other questions that we didn't answer throughout the... Um, maybe just briefly speak a little bit about the living situation, who lives with who and where and, and stuff like that. Okay. I live, I have a house. I live there. <laughs> Mac has a house. Campers. Oh. Wish you, I had a house. What's that? I wish I had a house. Not yeah. yet. Campers, um, you, uh, you live in bunks. The bunks hold between 12 and 18 campers with two to three staff members in those bunks. They are not air conditioned. Um, you don't need it. Sorry for our Texas friends on the phone, but it's cooler up here, come up north. Um, <laughs> though sometimes it can get a little hot, they do have fans in the bunk. Um, our bunks in Olive uh, and Bet all have bathrooms in the bunks. In our, most of our Olive bunks don't have showers, so there are shower houses that our campers go to. Um, they're part of sort of the culture and charm of Tel Yehuda. Um, that's a bit about our bunks. If you know, if you go on our website, you can see more pictures of our of our bunks. And just to add one more, you you bunk with everyone that is the same age as you, whether it's first or second session. You're only bunking with people in the same age group as you. So all the memes always with all the meme, Yachad's always with Yachad, and Hadrakad's always with Hadrakad. There's never a time that's going to switch. Okay, I'm gonna take our first question from the chat world. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you go about signing up for those four day programs during first session? Thank you uh, to S. Sternfeld for asking that question. Um, you will actually get a form in the early spring with the five choices on them. You'll send that back to us. We try to give everybody their first choice, which most people generally do. Sometimes people get their second choice. We'll also ask you, is it more important to be on the trip you want or with the friends you wanna be with? Um, and then we will send out an individualized packing list based on the trip that you chose. By the way, anybody else who wants to write in a question right now before we finish, that's fun to do um, in the chat box there. I see smiles. Um, is there a bus from airport? Okay, thank you, Jay Brozlovsky, for asking that question. There is a bus from Newark International, Newark Liberty International Airport. And uh, that bus, again, can be taken by people who are flying in, but also for people who live locally, they can choose to drop their um, kids off at Newark Airport, or they can choose to uh, drive them up to camp. So there will be bus transportation to both. We ask people to please make reservations into Newark and not into any of the other New York area airports. Okay, I know we're a little bit after nine. I, I appreciate people for hanging in there a little bit. I just want to give a little shout out once again to our friends from Camp Young Judea, Texas, for joining us on this call. Um, does any, you know, I would unmute them for one second and see uh, if, uh, okay, I can't, I can't do that. Hi, friends from Texas. Do you want to say hello? Sure, absolutely. Uh, sorry, we're kind of hiding under the mask of Frank Sobelik, uh, <laughs> our camp director, but uh, my name is Michael Esposito. I would like uh, David and Max said I work at uh, Camp Young Judea, Texas, and we also have one of our other assistant directors also on the call. So thank you guys for allowing us to check out your uh, virtual tour uh, demos and promos. So this is really in informative to us. Um, and uh, yeah, just uh, wanted to say hello and, uh, and wish everybody luck. Um, in, in their camp research and um, uh, Mac had, had reached out to me a little bit before and just um, you know we wanted to mention that um, I think a few I recognize a few of the names uh, from Texas but regardless of which junior camp you're from you know we, we strongly encourage the, the the continuation of your young Judea experience uh, up at TY 
Um, you know, for us as junior camp leaders, um, you know, we feel it's incredibly important to, to kind of remain part of the, the Young Judea community. And so I think ultimately, like, TY provides that next step kind of in the life cycle of, of Young Judea. And as David and Mac mentioned, um, eventually that kind of turns over into CIT programs and returning to the junior camps and to, to TY um, to eventually be counselors. So by uh, continuing on to TY, it's really kind of planting the seeds for your camp campers to, to be lifelong uh, members of the Jewish community and, and specifically the Young Judea community. So just wanted to say hi and thank you all very much for, for uh, allowing Iris and I to kind of tack on to your, to your presentation tonight. Thank hi. you so much. Oh, is that right? I'm here. I'm the other uh, assistant director on the call. Um, I was a camper at Tel Yehuda um, probably like eight or nine years ago now. Um, so it's just, I mean, for me, it's just kind of nice to see what y'all are doing up there and see how things have changed and stayed the same since I was there. Um, and I have to echo everything Michael said, obviously, as well. Um, yeah, so we're just uh, happy to be here. One of my favorite memories, I'll end here as a camper at Tell Yehuda, was my first summer coming to TY and making friends from Texas. Because um, <laughs> I, you know, I didn't know any Jews from Texas. So um, as you can see, and it's nice to have Michael and Iris on here with us. We're, we're, we're really part of one larger Young Judea family. And it includes our camps and it includes programs in Israel and it includes programs during the year. And so, you know, continuing on to TY now is not just about, you know, those next four weeks at TY, but really, really, really about, um, as Michael said, a lifelong commitment to Jewish people and, and to, to the Young Judea world. I do see one more question from Amber Vasquez. Are there staff at the airport to greet the kids and help them to the bus? Absolutely. We have a whole operation going on at Newark Airport we've been doing for years. They'll get off the plane. Um, as soon as they get through security, they're going to get a wristband slapped on them. They're, they're going to be seeing staff members all over the airport. We tell you who to t-shirts. They're going to bring them to the, um, to the luggage claim area, the luggage claim area. They're going to gather them together. When there's enough kids gathered to get the luggage claim area, they're going to get on the bus, and that bus is going to go up to TY. We're, we're generally going to running five to six buses on opening day from Newark Airport. Um, and like I said, it, it, it's an operation. We've got people down there with iPads checking uh, flight times. Um, we, we have learned how to work that place. It's why we ask people not to go to their airports because we only know how to work Newark. So, <laughs> uh, but yes, there will, be, uh, there will be staff. And you're welcome, Amber Vasquez. Um, so let me thank you, all of you for you know, spending your evening with us. Uh, Mac and I are gonna go home now and have dinner. <laughs> Um, those of you who are further west from here, it's a little bit earlier, but it's getting late here. As I said, please, please contact us with additional questions. Um, we, we're here all the time on our website, it's a little chat box too. If you just are on our website and have a quick question, you can just chat. One of us will answer your question right away. Or our phone number's on here. All this is on our website, obviously. Um, send us an email, tell you at youngjudea.org. Send us you know, a message on Facebook. Tweet at us, do whatever you do. Don't Snapchat us, we don't know how it works. Um, you so get an Instagram that, message. DM on Instagram is good. DM on Instagram. DM means something. Okay, um, <laughs> thank you all. We're gonna say goodnight. We hope we recorded this. If we did, we'll have this up on YouTube um, in the next couple of days. And um, tell your family, tell your friends. Um, we'd love to see them all, and we hope to see you all at TY. If you are not registered yet, and you're on this call, you know, let me, you know, be in touch tomorrow. Let me know what's holding you up and let's see if we can get you registered in a space at TY this summer. Lala Tov, everybody. Good night. Good night.